Good afternoon. I'm speaking to you live just outside. I like to think balding is just God's way of saying, now let's see you get laid. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? What I'd really like to do is put the greatness of this man in perspective. The halo of community has a lot to be thankful for, having you as a spokesperson. You mean you just call this guy up? About life and about reality. And now, America's number one reality radio show for men. Live from Los Angeles, it's Spencer Cobrin's The Bald Truth. Hey guys, welcome to the broadcast. 888-659-3727 is the toll-free number. Joseph Tillman, how are you? I'm going to leave the W out because that's not real. And maybe people are starting to get confused. They're looking you up as a Joseph W. Tillman, who just froze, by the way. Did I? Oh, you I did. did, didn't I? He did. But you can hear me. That's true. Yeah. Well, that's okay. a good pose. <laughs> it's an action shot. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to turn up your volume while we're trying to fix your okay. video. All right. I'll just leave, I'll just leave. Just I'm not even going to change the shot. I'm just going to leave you frozen for a while. Uh, okay. Guys, we're we are live. Uh, phone number 888-659-3727. I guess I can uh, change the shot here, except I don't have All my... Right. I'm going to log out and fire, fire it back up. You're logging out? Well, I got to... Well, you know what? I can do the... Uh, Go ahead. See it. Guys, yeah, can, phone number 888 We are live. Feel free to give us a call. We do have lines open. Actually, all the lines open uh, as Joe um, is playing with his video card. Uh, and you can obviously see it looks like a three-way shot of three-way of just me because his video is coming back to me. Um, so I'm just going to do this and wait till Joe figures things out. Um, this is the Hair Loss Show. We are live uh, from Los Angeles. At least I'm in Los Angeles. Joe Tillman, who's having technical problems, is live in Vancouver, British Columbia. And we are here to provide you with uh, the reality and information on everything and anything hair loss. And when I say the reality, I mean not only the reality of how fucked up it is to deal with hair loss at any age, but the reality of how fucked up the hair loss industry, the $4 billion a year hair loss industry actually is. It's a total mess. I'm back. Hey, welcome back. And Thanks. it's been a mess be since back. I've gotten into this game uh, more than 20, almost 27 years ago now. Now, you would think being doing what I do for almost 30 years, you would think that, oh, you know, may, maybe things would improve. Maybe by coming out on national radio and getting published by major publishers back in the day and, you know, having this broadcast uh, on the air, on the real air for 11 and a half years and then, you know, playing around with it on the Internet for a while, for the last, you know, decade or so, would have a tremendous impact on this field. But I said this pretty early on, probably, probably I think it was my first year in the field. It was like around 1999. And I said this on the air and I said, you know what? I know we're making changes. I definitely know that there's been an impact, at least within the field, which helped a lot of people. But what I saw even back then was there was always, because this is evergreen, new bad actors coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, by the week at the time, and now it's basically daily, who are willing to pimp anything, sell anything, mislead people, write ebooks, sell whatever they have to sell, connect themselves to any bullshit company they need to con connect themselves to. And this isn't just since social media came into play. This was happening on the alt message forums and the old school message forums mm -hmm. and the old school social media. There's always some new fucking character coming out with some happy horseshit, some bullshit. And there were always the desperate and the vulnerable and the people that are so connected to um, 
the possibility of not having to deal with hair loss for the rest of their lives. The false hope who are willing to fight you to the fucking end about simply telling the truth. Now, I figured out a way a long time ago to earn doing what I do without selling anything directly to the consumer. But for some consumers who I think over the years have needed to, to have their own, feel their own sense of power, whether it was connected to the industry, there was some sort of monetary incentive or it was just ego incentive. There are those where that's not good enough, where they have to find some sort of fault in what I do or Joe does or whatever it is, mm-hmm. where, listen, nobody's perfect in life, but we're really, there's no, no fault lies. We created resources where people can maybe have a fighting chance, make better informed decisions. But you're not allowed to make any income from those resources. Because if you do, there's some sort of, you know, possibility of, of being captured or corrupted. And I would say that in many cases that may be true. But Mm -hmm. I can tell you that in our case, and this is – everyone knows this who has paid attention over the years. um, I don't think there's too many people out there who are willing to say, don't have a fucking hair transplant. This should be your last resort. That seven out of ten people who have – undergo hair transplant surgery in today's market feel they're – either disappointed or really fucked up. And in general, if they're disappointed now, that means they're going to be fucked up within a few years. Mm -hmm. I say this because, you know, one thing I like to try to do is, you know, if I point out people's flaws, like these influencers' flaws or the misinformation they may be spreading, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, I never try to dehumanize them. I always say, look, these are people, I, you know, they're, they're building a content machine. They have to continue to fill their content. They may have production assistants who are providing them with this information that they then provide online. And they may not be doing this intentionally, but they are spreading misinformation. So here is my thoughts on this information that they're spreading without condemning them as being illegitimate or bad people or, you know, canceling them the way that the world wants to cancel people. And actually the way that I've dealt with my, sadly, my entire career, from doctors to so-called competitors to, you know, Mm -hmm. people running message forums who need the sense of power and ego. So I get a comment about, I had made a post about this dermatologist and she gave advice about essentially saying that if you're dealing with hair loss, the best course of action is to throw the kitchen sink at it. And all I said was, this is not good advice. This is bad advice from a board sort of like (laughs) dermatologist. (laughs) And there were a lot of people who applauded that. And then there were those who were like, A, you're not a doctor. Um, B, I wish someone would have given me that advice years ago instead of my dermatologist ignoring me, which... I guess mm-hmm. that makes sense. I can I can see that. Yeah. yeah. And then there are the people who are like, "Let's get her. Let's get this person. Let's somehow destroy this person's <laughs> reputation." And I'm like, "That is not the, what we're trying to do here. I'd much rather this person see this post, and then contact us, and for us to talk about why." This is not great information. Mm -hmm. And if she wants a debate, that's fine. But this isn't about trying to destroy somebody's reputation. So it's very difficult to even point out the misinformation uh, online without, like, a, a certain group of people who have the pitchforks and the torches out. Mm hmm. 
wanting to destroy them or the other way around. So I guess my point is, how do you win? How do you really get the point out there to really educate people? And, you know, when it comes to everything in life now, there, there's always like some sort of a fucking camp. They're either in this camp or in that, in that camp. No one's mm-hmm. in camp of the truth. Because they believe they're in their own truth. They make up their own truth. They base, it's all biased nonsense because they're, they're living on false hope. They want to, 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 at all costs, they don't want to believe that there's a chance that none of the shit's going to help them. We must be wrong about hair transplant surgery. We must be. Even though we're in the industry, we've seen all the worst of the worst. We know everything about this industry. We have to be wrong. It, the, the only people who are complaining are those who didn't make do their due diligence. They made mistakes. They picked bad Turkish doctors. Mm-hmm. That's the argument. So anyway, just voicing some of the, you know, the typical weekly frustrations. And also just, I mean, I realized this a long time ago, but there's no fixing it. There's going to be people who find us who are... Appreciate what we do. There are going to be people who mm-hmm. find us based on people bashing us, and then they'll take a look at what we do, and they're like, "Wait a second, the people who are bashing these guys, yeah. they're the ones who may be fucked up because this makes sense." Yeah. So either way, you know, whatever the situation is, even if it's negative, and people find us, people are there are a group of people, and I would have to say it's almost a subset, sadly, in this. In, 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 in this day and age, of people mm-hmm. who are critical thinking, who can make their own decisions, and who can base their decisions on reality, who are willing to take a look at what we say and the advice we give and say, wait, what's in it for them to provide this advice? What's in it for me to call out a, a board-certified dermatologist who has like 660,000 followers who's telling people, women, to throw the kitchen sink at their androgenetic alopecia Mm -hmm. without even discussing the reality of the plethora of of adverse side effects from using multiple medications, not to mention the possibility of massive telogen effluvium, not knowing what's causing the telogen effluvium. And then to say, well, first we, we we get you stabilized with all these medications, everything, topicals, orals, Light, light light therapy, PRP, and then we can pull back, which again is idiotic because you know as soon as you change your regimen, you could lose all your hair. So somehow pointing that out for a, 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 a small group of people was fucked up. Well, it's because you're on the payroll of Pfizer. Like, let's be real. You're discouraging the use of minoxidil. You're discouraging the use of these uh, biologics, as they're being referred to. And I'm just telling everyone to take the vaccine. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) I I, I find the whole biologics thing uh, to be very interesting, especially of late. And and it has to do with, you know, a, a, a lot of what you're talking about, actually. Uh, with these dermatologists that are not actually in the hair game saying throw everything in the kitchen sink at it, including PRP, including, you know, whatever variation of PRP you want to call it, uh, um, and then exosomes. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm disturbed thinking about, uh, about this. And it's, it's funny you're, you're talking about that you're, you're in your monologue about... Uh, this woman, because it's this type of, or this dermatologist, it's this type of type of approach that I was thinking about today and um, a few days before, where it's it's just one of those moments where I'm just kind of like, when is this going to end? When is there it's when not. is going to be some sort of um, you know development in the field where it's like, okay, everyone needs to stop. Um, making up this bullshit about how, you know, the, this, the, um, 
uh, the efficacy of whatever whatever witch's brew that they're putting together uh, can present for the patient. Um, I saw I saw online somewhere earlier this week where someone was guaranteeing the outcome of a surgical procedure if they combine it with the clinic's proprietary biologics. And I, I do not I have tell to me that this, this was happening in Atlanta somewhere. <laughs> it was happening in in Atlanta. Uh, just, it, it doesn't it, happen ju- just in Atlanta, but but that was the one I saw because so, someone asked it, me about it, it never due ends, to though. recent events. Yeah, but I I have to I have to ask, I have to wonder, who actually like is the average hair loss sufferer looking at this, thinking about a hair transplant and thinking. That makes sense. The, the average I hair loss sufferer, the average human being, the average American, the average hair loss sufferer, in general, the average person has taken the word of their physician, of a person. You know, when I started this a long time ago. The man in the white coat. Yeah. I said, you know, butchers wear white coats too. That line did not go over well Ooh. in the medical community. Yeah, but bullshit artists wear white coats. I have a lab coat actually on my. And it was a Halloween costume in my closet. I should put it on. Yeah, it says hair transplants are us. It has a little fake blood on it. I went to a costume party as a hair transplant surgeon, <laughs> but I digress. Um, What was what were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about that guy uh, with the biologics, and we we're talking about consumers. So essentially, we're dealing with a, a real vulnerability. It's like anything else, you know. Like what about like like all these biohackers and anti aging guys? There is this whole like carnivore versus v- versus you know vegan versus, and these people get on mm-hmm. these fucking teams, and essentially, you know what's happening. Everyone is just so afraid of fucking dying or becoming sick that they make this their they they they, they, they just get this certain bias that they attach themselves to and they start becoming yeah. warriors for these you know the, these sides and as a hair loss consumer we hope against hope we want to believe if this guy in the white coat tells us that this is real and he has some sort of a reputation or whatever, even if it's just – it's so easy to make up a reputation in this industry, you know, as far as the doctor is concerned. Really That's the easiest fucking thing in the world. And these guys have no idea. Getting published, it's all fucking bullshit. But anyway, <laughs> they believe because they need to believe. They, wanna, they want hope. They want to be helped. I certainly understand it. I was in the same position before I got into this field. I had the wherewithal somehow to step back and say, this looks like it's bullshit. But most people don't. No. It's a $4 billion industry. How much of the, of, of the stuff in the industry works? Not much. We have the same shit that works. Finasteride, minoxidil, oral minoxidil is being prescribed more openly now. Dutasteride, mm-hmm. topical finasteride, topical dutasteride. Different combinations of and 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 concoctions of these topicals. Low levels of laser light therapy. I don't fucking know, really. I mean, I just don't know. There is a lot of anecdotal reports that it claims. You know, it, it seems to be working. There are there's some data and some papers that have been published that are interesting that make it more believable, and that I could see where mm-hmm. yeah, there's some something is being done. You know, but how appreciable is happening. It? How appreciable is that hair growth or the reverse of miniaturization from people who are just using LLLT? I don't really know. I haven't been able to attach my IP or myself to any of these laser products. I'd like to just get a check coming in. Not a big deal. I'd love to do it, but yeah. You know, you have to draw a line somewhere in your life and in your career. And I, I kind of drew that line many years ago when I turned down a very 
incredibly financially lucrative opportunity. And I'm not saying that I never will attach myself to one of these products at some point, but I still haven't. And I think after 30 years in the industry, that says something. And what that says is, I don't know if this shit works. So when anyone, anyone makes claims and guarantees that somehow their biologics or their type of PRP plus a hair transplant will guarantee success, that's a red flag. There are no guarantees when it comes to anything for the, the prevention and treatment of hair loss, including surgery. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting while we're talking about this. Um, our friend Mike Pedroza in the chat room, he says, yes, PRP is worth it. I did PRP with dutasteride mesotherapy. It's been a game changer for me, and that's awesome. But what role did the PRP have in it? You know, in conjunction with the mesotherapy, and what was the protocol for this PRP compared to the next guy down the street, the next guy down the street from him, so on and so forth? That's the whole problem with the field of biologics for hair restoration: is no one is uh, no one has created a standard that works across the board. There's no standard. Period. The only the only standard for PRP is that the is that there's blood drawn and stuck into a f centrifuge, and even that can't be standardized. The type of centrifuge, whether it's a closed system, an open system, uh, what's added to the mixture throughout the process, how much blood to actually extract, how many cc's of blood should you should you extract. How, how much uh, PRP should you try to create from this blood, the, the concentration from this blood that you extract? Those things aren't standardized. Well, neither, neither are the, the, ba the very basics like sterilization of test tubes. Half of all PRP now is being performed, are being performed using non-sterilized test tubes. Yeah. Might as well just put your finger it's, in the test it, tube. Pretty much. Or lick it, you know. Being but performed in meta spas, that, that, in the back that's of, the whole problem of, with this. The back of beauty salons. There are doctors. Yeah. There, are, there, there, there are surgical facilities in the back of hair salons now. You know, I, I started to believe in PRP several years ago, and I, I've had PRP, and and just you know, I, I even had it with uh, one of the doctors I work with. I'm not going to go into that who it was. I thought it was moderately beneficial. He warned me up front. It probably wouldn't do much because all the hair on my head is transplanted. So we actually came up with the, with the idea of um, injecting into the fringe between native hair and transplanted hair, um, the, the demarcation zone in the crown. And that was a good idea. And that area along my part line actually thickened. But in general, I, I just don't believe in PRP. Uh, and I, and the past couple of years, I've, I've been losing faith in any sort of PRP from anyone. And then I saw something that kind of renewed my, Sean my, my, my hope with Dr. Sean Bannum in L.A. Yeah. In, in, a, in a private group that we have of, I don't know how many doctors we have in, in this group. He showcased uh, several cases that were like, holy shit. All this is from PRP, and what I loved about his pr presentation is he's is he was saying uh, among the the, the doctors, uh, yeah, really happy with with my protocol I've come up with, but it is temporary. It's not, you know, as any PRP is. If you have any sort of results, it is temporary, be it a year, two years, or whatever. It doesn't stick around. He also made it clear, so which, I, is, which I there, thought was which I thought, upkeep. which I thought was interesting because most of the doctors don't that um, you really have to, um, you know, marketing PRP, there are different variables. You have, to be, you have to state very clearly that, you know, this data hasn't been shown to, you know, to, to be, there's been no, essentially it's experimental. Yeah. And patients have to be, it has to be made clear that this is an experimental treatment before they can provide it. I don't know very many physicians out there that are saying this is experimental. 
So when they sign well, a release not, form, not to, it has to be in there that this is an experimental treatment. Yeah, it, it actually, I, I, I actually encourage everyone that's that's listening to this. If you are considering a PRP, um, and you have viewed um, consistency with results that you've been shown by whatever uh, clinic that you're you're considering, make sure that in any sort of forms that you you have to sign, and you all you all will have to sign forms, um, disclaimers, and you know all, all these all these different things. Make sure that there is a statement in there that it's been explained to you that this is this is an experimental procedure. That's a very important thing because um, if you're not being told this, then the clinic that you're dealing with is um, being dishonest with you. Well, they're also uh, they're actually they're, they're actually. There's also, at least in, in the States, you, you're really not allowed to provide these procedures unless you disclose that they're experimental. With that well, I, said— I, I, was, I was saying you're skirting regulations with the, with the FDA. Yeah. With if, that if you said— If you don't dis disclose that. Like with Sean's images, which are incredibly impressive. I've known people in my personal life who've done extremely well with, with PRP, uh, where it's maintained their hair and reversed the miniaturization and you know, stopped telogen effluvium for years. Mm -hmm. You know? So yeah. it absolutely can be effective, but no one should be guaranteeing anything, and everything needs to be explained at the top of the show, so to speak, before you decide to go you know, and, and have it done. Realize this is not an inexpensive treatment. There are no standardizations in any part of the in any industry, but especially the hair loss industry, and not all PRP is created equal. That's it. Everyone yep. was blown away by Sean Benham's um, results in this group. Yeah, yeah. But I can tell you this: he's not telling every every patient that you're going to get these results. What he's saying is, we've seen the these results in our practice using this protocol, and we're going to do our best for you to somehow duplicate these results. But nothing's guaranteed, and some yeah. people will get worse. No one wants to believe that. What you see online is PRP for hair loss. All these people in meta spas and these non-physicians, not even nurses in, in some cases, injecting like what looks like almost like urine. The, the PRP is so clear. It's not even PRP <laughs> into people's scalps. And people ask all the time, what about PRP? What about, well, are you getting PRP? Is it platelet rich? plasma that you're receiving? Are you getting platelet-poor plasma? Mm -hmm. Are the platelets being counted? Is it a single spin, double spin? Like you said, open or closed? Nobody fucking knows. Now, we're trying to do something this year, in 2024 to 2025, where we create a standardization in the field. That's been a very difficult task because everyone wants to have their own, own chokehold on their own type of PRP so they can claim, and they do, that their PRP or CRP or whatever they're selling is better than somebody else's. So instead of having, you know, maybe 200 guys who are willing to standardize this in their practice so that patients have a fighting chance, because there's still going to be the only a relatively small group who are willing to do this and you know, make the investment in the equipment and the infrastructure to make this happen. It's still going to be a relatively small percentage of the market. They still don't want to do it. Like, we're mm -hmm. going to have to force it on them. I'm down. Let's but do that's, it. But that's pathetic. <laughs> we got to force them to uh, adhere to safety standards. Also, efficacy standards. Like, hey, listen, you know, I, I remember, and guys, we'll take your calls in a second, 888-659-3727. I had a company at the first Global Hair Loss Summit that created, that was creating a, a standard, a way to standardize the protocol using AI, yep. where essentially everyone would be connected to, just say, the same phone line or device or computer, mm -hmm. uh, piece of software, and they would input the data that they were getting from all of, you know all the pra practice data 
using yeah. certain protocols. Yeah. And then the AI would then create the averages and just say, okay, this is the exact protocol that needs to be done for people who have these many platelets naturally in their blood and these many to these many, you know, and this is what you need to get in order for this to be effective. No one wanted any part of it. I don't even know where this company is now, but no one wanted any part of that simple standardization. They didn't want to put out the, they didn't want to outlay the cash and then they didn't want to input their data into like, just say it's like an international database that then creates yeah. using AI, a, a protocol that gets people with certain platelet counts to mm -hmm. the closest possible uh, standardized PRP for that individual that's possible. And all people would have to do is take punch in the readout. Okay, this is what we drew. We drew this blood. These are the platelets. How many times do these need to be multiplied in order to get a safe and effective PRP? Mm -hmm. No one wanted to do it. I remember that. Yeah. It's like, why not? Why wouldn't you want to do? Oh, well, yeah, it's, it's $3,800 for this. You don't want to make that investment. Meanwhile, they're going to invest, you know, $25,000 for a fat burning machine and have some idiot run in the back who's not even licensed. I mean, it's just a fucked up field. 888 Let's see who this is. Let's wake Joe up. Come on. I'm here. I'm here. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, gentlemen. How are you? This is Dan from New York. Dan from New York. Welcome, Dan. Man. How are you? Great. Thank you so much for everything that you guys do. The guidance that you provide, it's just unmatched in, in this world. Oh, well, thank, thank you, you for saying that, man. I'm glad we could help. So what's happening? Yeah, so um, I was thinking about, you know, getting this uh, surgery done, but after running across your videos and content, I realized, you know, how crazy of a field that is, how money-hungry these companies are and stuff, like in Turkey. Well, in all fairness, it's not just Turkey. Turkey just happens no. to be the capital of, you know, this money grab. Yeah. That's just the way, that's, that's, that's the unfortunate thing. There are some really just quality mm -hmm. surgeons in Turkey as well. But I'd say there's mm -hmm. maybe, I didn't even think there's 10 that I can name. That are that that I'd are surprised. that are putting out really consistent results, and those ten are more expensive than everyone else out there. Exactly. There. Yeah. So, so, all right. So, tell me, tell me your particular situation. Yeah. So uh, I'm 33. Um, I've got a little bit of thinning at the top, and uh, a little, you know, recession of the hairline. But overall, it's pretty good. Like Joe says, I would like it to be thick as fuck, but after I ran across your content and I've been just consumed by it for the last month, I realized, you know, that's not how this surgery for hair works. You know, once you, once it's gone, you don't have that luxury no more. Well, it, you we know, saved another one. The, the thing is, yes, you saved another one, Joe. Here's the thing. For years, the... The mantra in hair transplant surgery was that, you know, you wanted to create an illusion of a full head of hair. And that's what right. really what it was, because you never have enough supply to really meet the demand. So the key is if you can get up to about 50 percent of your original density or close to it, you can create an illusion of a full head of hair to, you know, someone who's, you know, with you at a social distance. Not someone who's looking through your hair with a comb, but you can look like you have a full head of hair. Now, that's kind of gone out the window because the physicians really wanted to kind of create a name for themselves, I would say, in the mid-2000s. Uh, it's claiming that they create, uh, can cre create or recreate density close to what God gave you before you started to lose your hair. So it became a war of density online. Mm -hmm. And that then yep. transferred over to the new market and the new normal of hair transplant surgery, which is the Turkish model, uh, removing as many grafts as possible and implanting them as densely as possible, 
um, in, in mm-hmm. one session. And that has unfortunately destroyed, not only destroyed the industry, but destroyed so many lives. There was a time when before you needed a hair transplant or considered it, where hair transplant surgery did reach, in my view, a logical endpoint. And those who were performing it well were getting tremendous results, long lasting results for their patients. But patients had more realistic expectations. Those days are done. Yeah. Your content, it's just second to none. It's like, you know, the absolute go to for anyone suffering with hair loss. Well, man, listen, I, I appreciate nice that. I, I wish the algorithms felt the same way, and I wish that the consumers in general felt the same way. You know, and, it, 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 and, uh, Sorry to, sorry to interrupt you, Spencer. Um, sorry to interrupt you, Spencer. I've been watching your videos over the years on YouTube and everything else, and since they're filled with like golden nuggets of information, you know. Well, man, I listen. I, I really appreciate you saying that, and you know, we we do our best to get the content out there. But I would say that in general, the algorithms and people in general, are, they they just want to hear what they want to hear. That's why, for instance, you hear you, you guys who are turned down by doctors and they were told they weren't candidates for surgery. And then they do a search online. They find people who are willing to provide them with the surgery and then they're fucked. There's a reason why the doctor turned them down to begin with, because they weren't candidates for surgery. That, that's, that's like on November 1st. Hey, you there, man? Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm still here, sir. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, is there anything that specifically that we can help you with? No, you know, it's just that my I would like to look better for my partner. But, you know, unfortunately, after, you know, really understanding the information you guys provide, I just have to live with it, you know. Well, I would like to still have my uh, hairline restored because, like, as I get older, I don't really, I'm not, I won't be worried about shaving my head, say, in my 50s, but... It's such a risky thing. Like another thing that you say, Spencer, is once you're cut, you're cut. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So that's well, right, hundred yeah. percent. So shaving your head, you know, you you really you really diminish that possibility. Are, are you riding a horse? No, I'm just going. <laughs> there's a there's a kid uh, there's a kid that just got off of his baseball practice running. On the sidewalk with cleats. That's great. Yeah, nice. yeah. I'm just going for. I, 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 I got a I got a uh, question stroll. for you, uh, caller. Have you you yes, you sir. said you you were looking at hair restoration? Um, did you have any consultations with clinics? Honestly, no, because uh, I I've just stumbled across your content, um, and I okay. just feel like there's. It's like drinking from a, you know, like I want to drink from this fire hose of the of the information that you guys have out there for the last couple of decades, you know, before I really go forward. But like the eugenics and some of the other ones that you guys say are part of the uh, the uh, hair restoration organization, like I was looking into that. Okay, well, I I was yeah, okay. well that that's good to hear because I was just curious if you had. Um had any consultations if you, you know, to, so we could learn what kind of information you're, you're told by, by various clinics. Um, but you're, you're taking, you're taking the right, the right path. Um, I, I like the fact that you, uh, you feel good about our content. So continue, uh, absorb as much as you can. Uh, you can, you can call us, uh, any Friday for questions you may have. And, um, you know, just never forget surgery's last resort. Uh, try everything but surgery. And, um, and and if if you're trying any sort of medication now, and I don't I don't recall you saying that you, you are, um, don't throw the kitchen sink at it. Try individual treatments and give each individual treatment time to do what it need, needs to do before you, you know, pile something else on top of that, so that you know what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, Joe. Um, thank you so much for again for everything that you guys do. And uh, I just, I just wish that you guys would continue, you know, well into the future because, like I said, you guys are the masters. Well, I don't know how much time I have left on this earth, man, but I will do my best. <laughs> Thank you so much, Spencer. Uh, you guys enjoy your night. Have a great weekend. All right, brother. Thanks for the call. I really appreciate it. You too. It. Thanks for calling. Take care. That was nice. Bye. Okay.
Phone number is 888 It's sweet. It's really nice, you know, but it doesn't take care yeah. of your Porsche payments, Joe. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> you know, that, you know that's you. going online somewhere. Of course. Jesus Christ. Guys, Always. the phone number is 888 We are here to answer your calls. If you have any questions or concerns about your hair loss, this is what we do. Um, you know, I, I I talk about my career not just, to, just not not to say hey you know I know everything like some people do but I've just been around for so long I've just seen this industry evolve and devolve I've seen all the the scumbags and, and just the, the nonsense and the online terrorists and all the all the shit that people just you can't even, you couldn't even believe it if we told you some of the real stories. And we tell you stuff. We give you guys inside baseball. Just spit on my mic. We give you guys the inside baseball. But I was uh, here, I was having a conversation with a old school physician the other day. And he's telling me some shit that's going in, in that's happening in his clinic, some politics in his clinic. Now Don't think that this doesn't affect you guys when there's either technicians at war with each other or a technician and a doctor at oh, yeah. war with each other, and they're working on your head. Don't think that that technician isn't thinking about some shit that just went down before you got there. Mm -hmm. Or just like, fuck it. Fuck this. I, I'm, I'm quitting anyway. I'm going to do this as quickly as possible and get the hell out of here. And that's going through their mind when they're operating on your head. That's right. Now these seem, the, 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 this seems like little little stuff, but this is really important stuff. Every aspect of a, of a, of a physician's practice is vitally important to your outcome. The political infrastructure, the way people get along in the practice, the way the physician treats their uh, their staff, the way the staff greets you at the front door, every aspect means something in the end result. Mm -hmm. You know, if a guy is really disorganized, I mean, this sounds silly. It sounds really silly. But if, if, if the physician is, is just a mess, an emotional and mental mess, his car is a mess, his house is a mess, his life is a mess, his love life is a mess, do you think that's not going to affect your your possibly affect your results? Do you think they're always able to separate this stuff? I know there are people out there saying, "What does that mean?" They, you know, somebody's good at what they do. No, 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 no. They're having a bad day. You could have a bad day. Now we're all human. Yeah. We're all human, but you want to pick people who have better days than not better days. You want to make sure that they don't have a lot of turnover in staff. That their staff and when is you willing... can see that unfolding online, count your blessings. That's true. Count your blessings. If you can see if you can see a doctor or a clinic melting down online, that's a blessing. Because oh, we're not we, know... we, we're not going to get into this, are we? No, no, no. I'm I'm, I'm talking in general because it's there's been more than one. That's there's true. There's been more than one. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'll, 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 I'll also say be <laughs> be wary of those who spend a lot of time answering your questions on public message forums or for fighting with people or debating with consumers and you know hair transplant patients on message forums or all these other social media outlets. Now, yeah. that's a bad sign. Never ends well. Let's take a phone call. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Ray Swatson. I'm here in Oklahoma. Hey, man. Hey. So now we know your last you name. Know. What's your social, last four digits of your social security? Sorry, I shouldn't have said my last name. I shouldn't have said that. I'm just used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. What's happening, man? Hey, I, 
It's all right. So I have a question for you guys. Um, I went to, I actually went through y'all guys and looked at eugenics and I had an operation in last year, October with eugenics. Okay. And mm-hmm. uh, everything went great. I had a great, I went to, which was kind of a culture shock because, you know, going over there was kind of different to see everything. They were exceptional, did a great job. Um, they actually fixed a, um, I had two procedures. I had one in the early 2000s and I was like 21, oh, man. Um, which they had put the hair in kind of at a wrong direction. Yeah. Um, and then probably eight years later, I had another one done. And then that course, that guy was like, Hey, uh, what you had done here in, in Oklahoma. And he said, uh, he says, well, your hair is the wrong direction. He goes, I can't really do anything, but I can just go ahead and, you know, fill in what I can. So I had a total of about, I think sixteen hundred was the total, like from both of those procedures. Now, did you have um, both of the, the procedures front. in Oklahoma? No, this the first one I had in Texas, okay. um, and that doctor is no longer around, so it probably explains a lot. <laughs> yeah. So mm, okay. um, again, I probably should have waited. I probably should have waited. I was twenty one. I was looking around. I was really trying to find something. I had Guardi got on finasteride. Of course, I've been taking that ever since. Mm-hmm. Anyway, had it done. It, I thought it looked great at first, but then later th- times went on. I did start kind of thinning up front. Yeah. Um, of course, it started looking kind of wiry. My hair is kind of coarse, um, curly, coarse-like hair. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, speed up the thing is I went to eugenics finally. I was able to go out there and set up a deal. Got out there. They treated me great. What I really liked was is they... I think when I, when I thought how much I need to have, by the time I got there, they said, well, you don't need that much. We're going to wind up not doing, I think I wound up getting 2,200. And I thought they said at first, maybe 24, 2,500. And they counted every single hair, which I wasn't used to that. And they were like, oh, we, we owe you a refund. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. Uh-huh. You guys actually count every individual hair compared to all the other places I went or talked to in the past. They were like, well, this is your price. You know, it's, X amount of money for 2400 and it's like, do you even know if you're getting that much? Do you see you guys, you guys see that being a problem a lot? Well, it is. Like it is. I mean, do you like an overall price? We have a we have someone, uh, an undercover tech who talks about that, and every once in a while she'll come on and and we'll do an interview with her, and you know, yeah. a lot of practices will essentially they set the price. We're going to give you 2200 graphs, mm-hmm. and then when they can't get 2200 mm-hmm. graphs. These technicians are told not to say anything, and that's it. Now, okay. but there are plenty of honest practices that will give you a refund. That will be like, look, we tried to get twenty eight hundred graphs or whatever. We were only able to get twenty four sixteen safely. So, yeah. you know, here, this is this is this is what you owe us, or here's a refund. So that does happen. Gotcha. It's not unique to mm-hmm. a, to 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 good practices. But there's a lot of really shitty practices out there that will just, this is it. We got their money, and how are they going to know anyway? Yeah. And it was crazy. I actually took that money that they gave me back, and I wound up tipping everybody there because they did such a good job. They stayed there for hours through the day. That's really nice. So I was like, here, you know what? Take the money. You know, I actually (laughs) – I I already brought enough as it was, and they actually saved me money. So I was like, wow, you know. Uh, here you go. Here's a tip for you guys. They they were great. There was it seemed like there was a whole team in there. From Are you kidding me? You give these the guys a tip, they they could eat for like a month. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, my last question was what I was really getting at is I have a real high forehead and I've always been self conscious of that. Um, when I went over there and they looked at everything, I said, "Well, we need you to wrinkle your forehead." And I said, "Okay." And they said, "Well." Mm-hmm. Where you can only come down so low because it's not going to look natural. Right. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, my next my next question is is have y'all what do you guys think about like the forehead reduction surgeries? Has anybody ever talked about that or called in about that? Well, yeah. I mean, we've been doing this for a very long time. We know a lot of doctors who um, yeah have performed these. You know, it's basically mm-hmm. like it's a reverse brow lift. And okay. It, you know, there's a lot of potential complications, and I believe that it really should be reserved for very specific cases. Usually, not a case okay. of a guy who is who may have a naturally high forehead. 
Um, yeah. You know, here's the thing. If they could have implanted the hairline lower, they would have. But based on Absolutely. Your, your furrowed brow, based on, you know, the essential, you know, uh, you know, measurements that these people really understand as far as aesthetics are concerned, they believe that you would look bad with a lowered forehead. Now, imagine if you actually had a procedure that cuts a trench of skin out of your scalp, pushes mm-hmm. your f- entire scalp, changes the integrity of your scalp to lower your hairline. You have a scar that then needs to be grafted. And then you're stuck with, even though if you took a measurement, it may not seem like it's that low, but on your face, it could look odd. You're stuck with that. There's no, there's mm-hmm. no coming back from that. So gotcha. you'd probably be better off if you were, you know, at some point, if you could speak to eugenics again, if you're happy with the procedure you said you are, and ask if they could maybe just, you know, add a little bit more in, in the frontal hairline now that they've seen it grown out. You know, just get another opinion. They may change their mind and say, you know what, we could do a little bit more. That's a possibility. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I would not go for okay, anything so- aggressive because you could really fuck yourself up, man. Okay. Well, and that's why I want to ask you guys, and you know, and I've seen, you know, I try to read all the stuff on it. Of course, you see that, oh, there can be some, some major complications. And um, I saw kind of a botched job of it done online. I was like, whoa. But then I saw some good ones, but, you know, those are going to be covered up. The bad ones are always going to be covered Dude, up. it's with, real. It's a so. very, <laughs> it doesn't seem aggressive. You know, most physicians say, well, it's basically just skin, you know, it's, it's basically just a, uh, relatively non-invasive type of dermatological yeah. surgery, but it's not. I mean, you're taking a trench of skin out of your head. Uh, everything has to be done really well to maintain, you know, without without getting stretched back in the scar. Um, yeah. I've seen some really great jobs done, but it's it's a risk, man. And I got to tell you, in in most cases, when I see it being done, it's never a hundred percent. There always has to be some sort of work done around it. Gotcha. So I mean, well, how I mean, high I is your forehead? I know that I'm gonna I mean, need some. What about can can you wear your hair down a little bit like I do? I mean, I kind of comb it to the side, wear it down a little bit, and that takes a little bit of the forehead height away, at least for me. Well, my hair's like super curly, so it's like uh, I've got like an afro, you know. Um, so it's just the way my hair sits. If I comb it forward. I can do that, but then it starts poofing up, and then it's just my hair is just. If you cut it just the wrong way, it just it looks funky. So and I, and like again, I'm I'm good with what they did, but I thought okay, I'd like to get a little bit more filled in um, because they obviously had to fix the box job from the other two procedures. Yeah. So they pulled that mm-hmm. hair out and then you know put it back in, oh. and uh, oh. they could only do so much. And they, like I said, they did a great job and they fixed all that. But they kind of did warn me, like, hey, you know, it might not be as thick as you're going to want it just because we had to do a repair a little bit on this. Um, and I was like, mm-hmm. okay, that's fine. But I was thinking, okay, if I did the forehead reduction, you know, which they say, hey, if we do forehead reduction, you're going to have to have some type of of uh, transplant. You're going to have to have some type of, uh, uh, of grafts put in to kind of cover the scar. So I thought, okay, yeah, well, I get that it. done yeah. and then have a film. Yeah, it can it, yeah. So that, that was just kind of my question. So, I, again... I wasn't too sure if anybody had called in and asked about that. I just want to get your opinion on yeah, it. Yeah, so. I would say that's in, in most yeah. cases, unless you have some sort of a a prominent defect, uh, which it doesn't sound like you do, it's a bad idea, man. And and, yeah. and there's no okay. reason why you can't circle back to eugenics and ask them what their thoughts are now that your hair has grown out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they and they've been great with contacting me every month and you know and asking how I'm doing. Send them pictures to stay up with everything. Yeah, uh, they, you know they've been That's great. Good. And like I said, it's right at it's right at a year now, so I'm right at the year point uh, yeah. this month. So it, you know, but uh, if it's not hair, if it's not hair greed, and if Thank it's you. something that is possible, like they're gonna have a much better idea now that you're a year out, if they can mm-hmm. maybe give you an extra, you know, uh, quarter of an inch of hair, or you know, just to to bring it down a little bit. It's possible. You know, you should definitely ask them, but. It is my advice, and this is not medical advice. Mm-hmm. It's a bad move for you to get something so aggressive. And once you're cut in that respect, there's no going back, man. And not you can not to mention you've up. already had the repair work. So a, 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 a surgical brow lift or reverse brow lift at this point is, is basically 
I, I don't want to say wasting the work, but it is it, it is setting the work that you already had back um, because you know any sort of brow lift that you have or forehead reduction you have that guarantees additional surgeries J- just just to cover okay. that up, and you may not even get the density you want with that that camouflage uh, as well. So then you're going back in. It just opens up the the strong possibility of two more surgeries after the forehead uh, reduction. So j- just not a good good idea. The, the The idea or the the time that that is a good idea for male patients is usually when they've had really bad work in need of correction that um, is better served from complete removal as opposed to individual. Uh, extractions via FUE. And I've seen plenty of those, like like a old plug surgery. I've yeah. seen some phenomenal turnarounds yeah. where, where where forehead reduction removed a bunch of plugs from the hairline. Uh, and two surgeries later, fantastic. But it is pretty extreme for so, something like that. And you've already started the repair, so you're in good hands. You're already hap- happy with how things are working out. So... What Spencer said is spot on. Talk to eugenics about, uh, you know, revisiting that option of lowering your hairline. They may say yes. You never know. Okay. Well, like I said, do, will they keep us updated? I mean, like though. I said, I know your wrinkles at the. Yeah, yeah, and the wrinkles on your forehead. I just worry. I'm like, okay, well, how far can we come down? Because where those wrinkles are at. But I will, uh, I will definitely reach out to them and and see what they say. So well, isn't I do it more it, I okay. like your? Isn't it more like your center furrow where they measure from as opposed to the top, Joe? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, they they they'll, they'll usually uh, measure from uh, the glabella, and then but but where where the where the forehead uh, furrows, it's mm-hmm. it's not right at that furrow. It's usually about a centimeter above. Right where it furrows, like on me, it would be right about. Here, I think, right about there, and that's about right for like a, a lower hairline on me, like about another centimeter there, and that that's yeah. that works. Yeah, like if I want, look, look, I could definitely use some shit. You know, I mean, my my hairline is, I mean, it's like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's come back like this. You know, you know, I'm able to kind of wear it down a little bit, and I feel okay. I'm 58 years old, but the truth is, if I comb it back, it's significantly higher than it was when I was young. You know, I got I have a five head as opposed to a four head at this point. But yeah, you know, I feel I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thirty nine, so I, I guess. yeah. But but we also have different hair. Like if your hair was more like mine, you'd be able to style it mm-hmm. maybe more comfortably, and you wouldn't have the exposed forehead. So I I, I completely well, so you mean I, by furrow. You mean by furrow being like the wrinkle, right? Is that what you're? Yes. That's what you yeah. consider the furrow, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can't okay. really furrow my um, brow. I don't really, for some reason, genetically, I don't have like a lot of wrinkles in the brow. So I don't know how they they would just probably, I have like one in the center. But yeah, usually it's, they measure from the center to the top. Joe's top is pretty high. But yeah, I mean, Joe could definitely um, lower his hairline a little bit. But I actually think, I mean, look at Joe's hairline. Is yours is your forehead bigger than Joe's? Because Joe's hairline looks pretty good, pretty perfect. Even for a thirty-nine no, mine's, mine's mine's a little lower, but my thing is when I wrinkle my forehead, I've got thirty thousand wrinkles across my forehead. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay, so, so genetically, you just yeah, have more yeah. furrows. Yeah. 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 All right, brother. So well, that's listen. Kind of the thing. I, I'm glad that you had I some good it. good results. I'm glad that you found our mm-hmm. our, our, our resources. Uh, you're in good hands, and if they think they can, and if you're willing to do it, which it seems like you are, because you were willing to get a more aggressive surgery. It's very possible now that your hair has grown and they could say, yeah, you know what? We can probably give you a little bit more and help you out. There's a, there's a possibility. And if they say no, then I would say you probably want to live with it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm again, I'm not wanting to come down that much farther, just a little bit. So, again, if they were to make a compromise, I, I'd be happy with that. You know, but if they don't, then that's just what it is. Well, so. ask them first because they just might. I think I think that being gotcha. appropriate and conservative – was the right way to go so that you could they could see what your initial results are going to be like and obviously you're happy with those so that's that's a good first step. Mhm. Gotcha. All right, All brother. Right. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Phone number 888-659-3727. I can't even tell you how many, and I would say 
maybe 50 in my career, maybe more, guys who had these forehead reduction surgeries. Mm -hmm. And not one has been happy with it. Now, women are a different story. But not one guy that I know of, except, no, that's not true. I know one guy who had really serious old school plugs that had a trench of plugs removed. And it was kind so of like. Okay, so you're, so you're not yeah. talking about the guys that just want to want their hairline lower and they automatically go for the forehead reduction as opposed to a hair transplant. You're talking repairs included. In my entire career, I've only known yeah. one guy that was happy. That was a repair that had that trench removed. Now, you've worked in clinic with people mm -hmm. who probably had a lot of those done. I can't say a lot, even though, um, like, o over the course of 11 years, I'd say I've seen less than 10 that were before in clinic while I was there. Yeah. Um, all, all of them turned out fine, more, more or less. Uh, to varying degrees where the patient was happy and it looked fine. You go back in, you know, uh, back then a proper FUT and recreate the hairline as if you have a, a clean slate, which is which is how it was described. It's like, you know, you can't camouflage these plugs with individual follicular units when those plugs are your hairline and it's already at, you know, seven centimeters. You have to remove it. Yeah. FUE wasn't the option. Because uh, there are way too many, um, so you got to take out the plugs. You got to take out the scar tissue that all the plugs creates. You got to take out the ridging, uh, which is also quite common with uh, just bigger grafts being placed uh, too close together. Um, all of that, and so it, it's a challenge because you also have the the scar tissue. It's it's almost like it's anchored on the skull itself. So it, it's it's a tough it's a tough procedure. Doesn't Doctor Wong have like, like a a frame filled with all of those old trenches of tissue? Yes, I'm yes. He's kidding. he's got him sitting. He's he's got an old lab that that um, it's it's strange when you walk into it. Everything turns black and white. I don't know why. It's bizarre. But, um, it's like saw. <laughs> it's bizarre. But uh, it's I, I gotta tell you, like the, some of the some of the most touching. Uh, results in, in ex patient experiences I've ever experienced were from those guys that had uh, lost all hope. Uh, kind of like Adrian, you know, uh, Adrian lost a lot of hair except for the plugs that are still, you know, on top in the hairline. Um, those are those are some of the best, most touching cases I, I've ever dealt with. And um, yeah, but still, I mean, very few in the grand scope of things, grand, grand scheme of things, very few of those are performed anywhere. Uh, much less with success, and so I'm, I'm. I feel I feel very happy that those that, that I was able to witness and be a part of did turn out really well. So, yeah, not not performed very often. Anything else, Joe? No, at least not yet. We'll see. We'll see who calls. Guys, the phone number is triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. I would say that you know this is a. This is an industry where there's so much bizarre experimentation that's been performed over the years. And I have been privy to, first of all, I will say that at least back in the day, the repair surgeries in general were much more straightforward than they are today. Today, it's, it's practically impossible to repair a true botched job. If you're really yeah. botched in today's FUE marketplace, What's going on? I got like a poltergeist. If you're botched in today's FUE marketplace, if your donor is completely depleted, which happens so often, you're fucked. There's no, there's really no repairing you. At least back in the day, if it was a bad strip, uh, stretch back, maybe hairs mm -hmm. are placed, you know, in the, in the wrong direction, you still had a, a canvas to work with. Those days are gone. Yeah. So basically, repair surgery now is, let's see if we can tattoo those scars. And if that doesn't work, maybe you can wear a hairpiece, maybe you can't, because the donor is so fucked up that essentially it's just going to look like you're, you're wearing a, a, you know, a, a hair helmet with scar tissue around the back and sides of your scalp. That's what kids are being left with today. 
No one wants to believe me. Yeah. These people on Instagram get so angry with me when I say this stuff. Like, what's my agenda? Well, I don't know what my agenda is. You know what my real agenda should be? I should open up a repair clinic only here in Los Angeles and have all you suckers fly year. in. I'll hire, I'll do, I'll, I'll do the rotating doctor thing. Every, you know, whatever, any IHS member wants to come in, they'll get paid top dollar. So it'll be whoever. This week we'll have this guy, and this week, next week we'll have this guy. And it, I'll take you know my cut off the top. I'll pay the rent, pay for everything, and that's it. Two years max. I would say easily thirty million dollars, maybe more. Joe, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Maybe more than that. Easily do two, repa two repairs a day. Yeah, five days a week. Maybe well, I'll work on Saturdays. We'll have we'll have somebody working on Saturdays. I'll call undercover doctors. Undercover doctor work on Saturday. Yeah, we can have several ORs. Yeah, I'll have undercover doc run the whole fucking thing. <laughs> Does he so have to stay undercover while he's while he's performing? While well, he's essentially, working? he he walks around and he's like in a shadow. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who this is. That's good. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? Good morning, Spencer and Joe. It's Graham from Melbourne, Australia. How are you doing? Graham, what's Graham. happening, man? My hair going, moves. Buddy? Oh, oh it, it moves. I, I thought I had to ring in. No, I'm just... I'm just I thought I had to ring in before I'm, I'm Christmas glad. and say hello. How you been, buddy? And um, as, Good. Really good. Really good. Really busy, but really good. Really good. Um, what I'm ringing about, I've, I've been sending a couple of photos to Joe. I, I decided to jump on the oral minoxidil um, bandwagon uh, probably about four or five months ago just to see what it did. And, and wow. As Joe's seen a few photos, the um, results are phenomenal, like as in from what it was to Four months later, like the growth was huge. It's 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 yeah. like fertilizing your lawn in spring. Um, absolutely no side effects, no no bloating or anything like that. I'm only using two point five milligrams once a day, and um, you know I know it's never going to fill in the crown. That's impossible. But um, just seeing the results and more more doing what you guys always say to do, look at medical before surgery because I never tried this and this is like, the result's huge. If I'd done this 20 years ago, it would be a different story again. So um, yeah, that's what I'm ringing to basically say just to people, don't don't rush anything. As, as I've made my mistakes in the past, luckily I've never went under the knife yet, but... There is hope for people with medical treatment, and well, like yeah. what you I, say, I, what I don't think I don't think a lot of people understand. And they may not have seen you, seen you, uh, Graham. But I mean, you were pretty far mm -hmm. gone. I mean, to the point where you you know yes. you started losing hair early. You shaved your head down yep. very close. You um, you know you accepted your balding fate. And you ended up being able to wear it well and live your life, and as difficult as that was for you, mm -hmm. and you're just kind of, you know, almost. This has almost been been a hobby for you to kind of watch the program and be involved, and you started to enjoy it for entertainment purposes. And you're like, "Fuck it, let me give this a try." And you grew a lot of hair after. I mean, how old are you now? Now I've just I turned fifty in February this year. All right. Wow. Mazel tov. Well, 50 years old. So you're still relatively, you know, actually, no, you're old. I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> no, I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> you're not old, dude. I'm, I'm but, almost a decade older than you. You're a young man to me. I, I, I can say, uh, I, Graham, I didn't know you were going to be calling in about this today, but I, I can attest, like, uh, he was basically Formica, uh, Formica boy, and um, for lack of a better and he started sending me these 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 pictures over the past few months, and I thought he's actually seeing something that this is like I can see in these pictures. It's it's pretty impressive, and I got to say, uh, Graham, you're still early days, man. Your crown is I'm, I'm seeing that 
that uh, peach fuzz in your crown. So don't don't uh, don't give up hope for the crown. That could actually change as well. You are early days, my friend, and you're having a really strong turnaround quite early. So never say never. It might happen. You know, what, I think the good news amazing. is that, you know, for, for amazing, all of us. Really, that's what Adrian said, too, as well. Adrian from Melbourne, he he said the same thing. Just hang about. Just relax. You know, you, you'll be surprised what will come through. Just let it grow out a little bit. And that's what I'm doing. And um, and it is. And it has, hair loss has become a hobby for me more than correct, do anything major than anything. I, I find it quite interesting, like you, Spencer. And I hope one day for... Well, the younger generation, there is a treatment that really works well apart from finasteride, but mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to be going in that Fuck direction. Fuck the younger generation. But, um, what about us? Oh, well, you know. <laughs> We're still alive. It's we still have hope. It's funny now I'm 50, like you were saying, I say to myself, I am old, but I seem to be, when I talk to the younger guys, I feel like a like a dad now i'm telling stories from the old days you know and tell me about things it. like that it's it's kind it's kind of weird like I, I i would talk about things like when the bands that i used to see and the places that i used to go you all you young guys don't have that anymore it sounds like know? my and dating they, they life look at you. yeah they, they look at you like you're a fucking <laughs> idiot, you know? but, um, <laughs> but i've, I've, I've become a storyteller now in life <laughs> look man that, I, i'm i'm but telling anyway, you that's a I'm, I'm telling you that all, all these early intervention has always been the key. But now that more that that doctors are willing on a, on on the regular, even dermatologists are willing to prescribe low dose oral minoxidil. There's a lot of guys who are willing to take it, and let, there is a chance of adverse side effects. We don't know what the long term adverse events are going to be from this drug. The thing is, it's been around mm -hmm. since like 1972, right? Something like that. So it's been around for a long time. It's been used forever. And there doesn't seem to be any real significant long-term adverse side effects. There have been some heart issues, things like that. But every medication has this. But the fact now that at least even the average dermatologist has this in their arsenal and they're willing to prescribe it, it gives people a fighting chance to, to give at least if they're well-informed about what they're putting into their body, it gives them a chance to really do something now. So you have finasteride, dutasteride, which I still think is a last resort, oral monoxidil. That combination, if someone decided to use the combination, finasteride wasn't enough, it could be incredibly powerful. Adding Just adding yeah, like oral finasteride to your, your regimen, which people weren't doing. There's almost something that... It, I knew about mm -hmm. it. I know Joe knew about it. I'm sure that Joe, it was prescribed in your clinic at some points, Joe. Maybe it wasn't, but I knew doctors who were prescribing it. And I always knew that it could be like on the back burner for me if I ever needed it. But now I'm yep. seeing so many people experiment with it. If I do decide to take it at some point, I have a better um, real, world, real world view of what the potential downsides are. Yeah. I can understand you, Spencer, not going with it. For me, I looked at it and go, well, if my hair falls out or I get a bad response from it, as long as I don't die, yeah. um, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. But someone like yourself that's always in, in the limelight, it's a different story. And you know the risks more than anyone. Um, so I, I, it was the curiosity killed the cat. I just had to try it and see because I always noticed that I got good response with topical monoxidil. And um, I know you're not a, a real fan of it, and you're sort of always a bit negative towards that side of thing. It wasn't something that you liked, but um, I always found it was fantastic. And even, even Adrian says he gets big response from it too. So, um, Well, just, just yeah. so you know, it wasn't that I was necessarily negative. It was more that I, I for, for whatever reason... For most people, it seemed to be a relatively temporary fix if it did work and kind of acted as a Band-Aid. So my thought process was always start with oral medication first. You know, really deal with, in quotes, the root cause of your hair loss, which was always thought to be mostly DHT. Now they know that there's a lot more inflammation involved as well. And if that's working for you, 
great. If you think you need a boost, then you could add the topical minoxidil. But the problem is most patients and most doctors prescribe topical minoxidil first, or they prescribe the combination of finasteride and topical minoxidil, kind of trying to get the synergistic effect, and no one really knew what was working for them. But yes, on a personal level, I felt like I need to get off that shit. I didn't want to stay on it, and I weaned myself off of it many years ago. And I never recommend it as, and again, I'm not a doctor, as a first line of attack. But like you, a lot of people get good results from it. Yeah, very, very, very lucky. And it, it is. It's just a bit of a bit of fun. And let's see what happens for me. If I had side effects, I'm off it tomorrow. You know, that's that's the way I look at things. But it, all the I'm just lucky that I was the person when I was young enough to not go under the knife because all these people that are coming in now as the 21, 22 year olds that went under surgery have spent thousands of dollars and, and years of negative thinking because of what's happened. And I'm glad I'm not that person. Well, you're lucky, you just, got ripped, you're lucky you just got ripped off by a wig company. Yes, yes, correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. That's, that's, there's, there's no way to say it any better. That's exactly what it was, a car salesman, you know. So Look, I, I almost um, had a wig sewn into my head. I almost, I yeah. almost signed on a dotted line, and I, I, and I, I, I said I would do it, and then I thought about it, and the salesman called me up, and I told him I'm not going to do it, and he was like, "What are you talking about? You said you wanted to do it," and I just thought, I, you know what, I, this isn't a good idea. And then the very next week, there was a news report in New York about this specific company. I think they were in Cinnamon, Cinnamonson, New Jersey that uh, they were being sued. It was like a class action lawsuit and people were getting all kinds of infections. And even though I wasn't 100% sure that it was a wig being sewn into my head, after thinking about it, I'm like, well, what else could it be? And that's exactly what it was. And they were they had physicians yeah. who were willing to get paid to sew a hairpiece onto someone's head. Think about that. Yeah, well, when I did it, what Advanced Hair Studios was using was these, they were like little beads. You'll probably know it. You'll yeah. know what they are. And they squeezed them onto my hair. Right. And because it wasn't sitting right mm -hmm. on my scalp, they, they would adjust it and move it tighter, which caused a lot of tension and pain. Right. And their theory on the TV ads that you saw at 12 o'clock at night was, the guy jumping into the pool like it's nothing. Yeah. There was no way in the world yeah. I'd be jumping in the pool. It would have felt like someone was pulling my hair from the back, yeah. you know? And that's where I said, this is fucked up shit. You've made a big mistake. How did it look? And, um, <laughs> it, it looked, in my opinion, it looked terrible. Yeah. In my opinion, I, I remember sitting in the seat and saying, it's too thick. It's not what my hair was like. I come in to have my hair look what it used to look like. This is ridiculous. Yeah. And I remember walking out of the shop and I could see these people over the road looking and I'm thinking to myself, they must be looking at me and saying, "What is this what this place does? You know, I was so paranoid. I actually become more paranoid. I only ever went out once with it to a nightclub and I become more paranoid when I had that thing on my head than I didn't have that thing on my head. So there's, there's a lesson for anyone with a transplant. If it fucks it up, purpose. you're going to be worse off. You, you're going to be sitting at home, twiddling your thumbs and drinking beer because you're not going to be going outside, I can tell you. That's the truth. Well, I, I think, and again, at least you were able to remove that shit and throw it away and just you're out a few thousand dollars. Exactly. You know, but... Yep. And, and again, you know, companies like that gave the hair systems a really bad name. And I think that that has lasted, just like plugs, you know, have, have lasted in in our society, you know, where a guy would rather have, have his scalp cut open, essentially, than try to wear a, a, a hair system. And today's hair systems, if they're done right, they could look really good. But, you know, there's a huge stigma because of what you went through and because of how shitty they used to look, you know? So the whole thing, it's a really, it's, a, it's an emotional, it's just a mind fuck for people. And the industry was built on bullshit before and afters. 
people, you know, riding out uh, off the back of fire trucks and, you know, with their hair blowing in the wind and jumping in the pool with hot chicks, like you said. And that's how they sold this dream to people. And they usually never delivered. And the same is happening now, yeah, except that... it's possible now to actually be helped, but it's so hard to navigate. The hair systems that today, I must admit, they look fantastic. But then again, it's the maintenance. And anyone who knows, they're not they're not stuck on your head for six weeks and they're, they're going to look great. Mm-hmm. You, you have to keep, you've got to maintain them all the time. And I've heard they smell, there's different little things that they don't tell you that, it's not as easy as it looks. And Look, if, if you, you work keep, a physical job like my, If you keep that shit in your head for more than a week, it's going to smell. I mean, the, anyone that yep. claims that they, they, you could join a club and come in every four weeks to get it adjusted, that's bullshit. You have to learn how to maintain. It's like, it's like a full-time gig. It's like working out. If you want to maintain your body. Well, it's not BS. You can still do that. It's just you, you learn real quick that that's not how you want to do it. Yeah. Like, you can do it, but do you want to? Probably not. Yeah. No. So, well, listen, Graham, no, it's always no a way. pleasure, man. Congratulations on the growth. Uh, it's, it's, I, I think it's, it provides hope for people, especially younger guys, because you're a guy, a man mm-hmm. of a certain age, who has been balding for a very long time, who has seen a reversal of his hair loss process with his medication. That's huge. That's, that's exactly, that's what I wanted to tell everyone and, and, just relax and don't jump the gun. You know, a week, a year in hair loss is nothing, as you know. A year in hair loss is nothing. Um, yeah. It takes that long to for anything to show. So that's the basic bit of the story. Well, Graham, listen. Yeah, so thanks a lot, and have a great night over there, and um, have a merry Christmas. As well, <laughs> <laughs> right on, Graham, buddy. listen. Take I'm already care, seeing uh, d- decorations. Yeah, I'm, I might have my head up on top of the Christmas tree with a uh, full head of hair or something like that. No, yeah, no, it's only a couple of months. <laughs> we'll see. All I right, gotta see that picture. It's not long away. That's why I said it's not long away. So, um, yeah, you take care, guys. All right, and thanks. thanks All right, for the take, call. Care. All right take care. Bye bye. Phone number triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. It's pretty amazing when you see these guys who've been super bald for a long time and they hop on either finasteride or or a monoxidil yeah. later in life, and all of a sudden, yeah. boom, they're growing hair. Boom, yeah, G- give and, me hope. Well, yeah, but that just goes to show you that you know early intervention is so important. All these guys are wasting their precious time with all the happy horse shit out there, as opposed to seeing a doctor getting on medication. Mm-hmm. I understand the concern, the finasteride concerns, especially the way that things have been presented online for, you know, for the last 15 years about finasteride. Mm-hmm. I just saw something that was sent to me uh, as a group of guys. Um, uh, one was a young doctor, and I think one was just like some quasi-influencer. And they were talking about post-finasteride syndrome. And I have to tell you that, look, I believe it's, I believe more people are suffering from it than ever before, but it's not because there's more prescriptions than ever before. Yeah, I mean, with Keeps and Hems, there's definitely a lot more prescriptions out there. Uh, guys who are u- using finasteride that don't know they're taking Propecia. But there was a time before all this mass hysteria where it was doing, re- that drug was doing really well. Yeah. And between the years of 1992, which is when Proscar was approved, and 2005, you didn't read anything online. And no forums, no physicians were talking about it, nowhere. Nope. About post-finasteride syndrome. Now, during the original clinical trials, apparently there was some information that did not make the press, that didn't make it to the FDA, about a handful of patients that suffered adverse side effects and then believed they suffered it, suffered adverse side effects once they discontinued the drug, but they weren't followed. I don't even think they were followed for more. It was more than a couple of weeks. They made the initial complaint Mm -hmm. and they never followed up. Now that still should have been included in the clinical trials. And I think it's a little fucked up. 
Yes. But with that said, it's still such a relative minority. When you think about the hundreds of thousands of patients currently utilize, taking the drug and the millions of patients over the years for at higher dosages for benign prostate hyperplasia. Yeah. It's an interesting subset of people that are suffering from this, and we just we don't really know why. There are some studies that claim that's like a mass hysteria thing, and then there are some... Um, I, 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 well, that's not a study either. That's really it's just a paper. And there are some papers, and I'm not going to say they're studies either, that look at this with a more critical eye, and they're trying to figure out exactly why this may be happening to certain patients. But that scare, because people are so con concerned about it. I'm not saying they're overly concerned or if it's, a, it's an appropriate level of concern. But it is keeping people from really, who really want to save their hair, from the true possibility of making that happen. And a lot of these guys end up having surgery prematurely and really getting fucked up, where they probably mm -hmm. wouldn't have been fucked up by the medication, at least according to the odds, even the current odds. Even if you triple the, the adverse side effect numbers and data, it's still significantly less than hormonal birth control as far as adverse How uh, dare events. you say that? Yeah. How it's dare just, you say it's that? It's just the truth. You got to play the odds, man. How dare you? You know? And I'm being honest. I don't know if I if this would have been out there when I was considering taking the drug. I don't know if I would have taken it. So I understand the reluctance. Yeah. A hundred percent. I'm just I'm so fucking lucky that no one was talking about that shit. They were just talking about breasts, uh, breasts, breasts development, uh, and and growing tits. And I was cool with either one. I just say this, I just said, repeated the same thing. Breast development. You really did. Tits. Yeah. yeah. Jesus, yeah. I'm getting yeah. old and tired. Anyway, <laughs> tits or breasts, I'm fine with them. Oh God. Triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. Um All right, we'll take a phone call. What time is it? Yeah, we got time. Yeah, we got time. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hello? Hello. Hello, hi, hi, it's Bevin Boyerold from Melbourne, Australia. Hey, Doc, how are you? Bevin. How are you, how are you Doc? You okay? So, Doc, am I wrong about uh, post finasteride syndrome and, and the, 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 the hyper-concern that we see online? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? On post finasteride syndrome? Um, look, I... I don't. I don't see see that much, and often, often um, we can get around it. You know, uh, well, the, the side effects of finasteride by altering the dose or 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 using topical finasteride. Um, but certainly, sort of long term, I haven't come across that that much. I, I know there's a lot a lot being said online about it, but um, I don't know. You know, what, what do you guys think? Well, I mean, my my thoughts are that there's well. there's, there's definitely there has been a mass hysteria effect, but I'm not saying that mm -hmm. it's not happening to people. I just know, like I, like I just said, and uh, I don't know if you're listening, but um, you were on, on hold for a short period of time. But from 1992 to 2005, there was nothing online about it. When ProScar was approved at five milligrams, all you would see is some people would write about adverse sexual side effects, and then when they got off the drug, they were fine. And these were older men. Um, yeah, yeah but Minutes, right. So, I mean, so it wasn't until 2005 when the first report came online. It was on an RX um, review website. And then there were two reports. And then within that same year, a well-known website was established by the people that made these reports, from at least according to the information that I have. And then it became like this mass hysteria situation. Now, I'm not saying that the people that have reported their adverse side effects to this website initially weren't all suffering from them. I believe they were. But what percentage after that of men who were suffering with it were suffering from the you know, possible psychosomatic effects? That we'll never know. Yeah. 
I, I think a significant yeah. d- d- define significant, but I, I think a healthy number of people that were complaining about this are actually, um, I, I'm not saying purposely doing this, but they're mistakenly uh, using PFS as um, as an excuse for something that they, they're already going through. I've I've spoken to a lot of guys that have told me their their symptoms, um, and as I'm as I'm drilling through their their case, and, and this is you know several years back when I was still in clinic, uh, getting a lot of phone calls every day. Uh, as I would drill down through their timeline and start to ask uh, questions that surround the issue itself, it would usually turn out to be. Oh, okay. Well, they're 53, 54 years old. Uh, no, they don't exercise. Um, no, they don't really eat very well. Might drink too much. Um, generally, not a picture of pristine health, and refuse to accept the fact that their testosterone levels are naturally going down, and they blame it on the uh, finasteride that they, that they took three times seven years ago. That kind of situation. I've run into that a lot. Maybe not so extreme, but where there is easily the potential for some other uh, reason for these issues that they're having. Um, n- not to mention uh, a, a plenty of them. I, I, I can't say you know what percentage-wise, but plenty of them were also taking SSI inhibitors before they even started uh, with a finasteride and decided to blame the finasteride um, on the potential side effects. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think that there's there's a, a healthy portion that are misdiagnosing themselves with PFS. Yeah, I agree. It's very difficult to isolate the side effect. And, uh, so many people these days say, take antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication, which are notorious for causing yeah. these sorts of things. So, Doc, um, so, you, so you, you obviously didn't call in about this subject. What can we do for you? <laughs> No, it, it was interesting your comment earlier on about about doctors who haven't got their lives in order, um, and uh, and it having an effect on on patients. Um, I think you said that, didn't you, Spencer? I did. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, th- I think I'll have to listen to Jordan Peterson and make my bed every morning before I go to work. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I I, I no, believe I, that in, in every aspect of life, in in, in my career, in my life. You know, my 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 whole gig is you know I need my space to be organized, my car to be organized, my mind to be organized in order for my work to be organized and for me, me to produce my best for my family and 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 for you know everyone who depends on me for what I do in life. No, it's it's, it's true. You know, even even if there's sort of tensions between members of of the team. During surgery, it, it does make you a bit anxious about about you know what's going through that person's mind. But the, the the thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is is um, you know I, I see a lot of a lot of men and women with androgenetic alopecia, and um, as you've said countless times, you know the 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 impact on on men is often understated, the psychological impact. Um, but what what I find uh, really interesting um, and you know, I'm sure you guys have seen this. Is the the sort of the response or the coping mechanisms of men versus women? You know, often um, often women, well, you know, it's, it's not always the case, but will have an emotional response whereby they'll they'll go out and spend a lot of money and maybe you know maybe talk to their peers and so on. Whereas with some men, not all men, you know, the the reaction is is a bit different. And that's not to say that they're not suffering any less. And, you know, as, as, you, as you guys well know, you know, they are, and in some cases probably more. But some of these guys become extremely invested in their hair loss to, to the point that, I mean, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen the extremes as well. I see so many of these patients who bring uh, their iPads with folders of, of hundreds and hundreds of photos they've taken every single day. I've even I've even got this I've even got a couple of patients actually who who count every single day how many hairs they shed and then generate spreadsheets and graphs and everything else and it, it becomes all consuming. 
Well, I didn't. I didn't um, have a spreadsheet or oh, a yeah. graph because I, uh, this this is back in the day, even before I had a laptop or, or, or a computer. But I would count my hair, and I would actually put them in plastic bags with the count, with the hair count. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, women women do that often. But the you know the the extent to which, for example, men read medical journals and read papers and so on. Look. Obviously, you know, women are very affected by this, too. And, and, and what I find is they, they'll often go out and spend money and go to the hairdressers and buy products and so on. But the amount of time that the men sort of drill into the detail and, and will, read every, will read papers, and even men who, have, you know, who have, haven't got a background in, in, in that sort of thing, you know, will become very invested and become very knowledgeable. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and to the point that... It, it probably takes over their life in, in many cases. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's just fascinating. It, it's just, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, one is good or one is bad or sure. whatever, but it, it's just fascinating how... Well, how it could also, par- it, in many cases, it paralyzes them as far as making a decision. Or, in other cases, it they are willing to become guinea pigs. So you'll see, like... Reddit groups or, you know, the old online forums where uh, there's a lot of experimentation. And, you know, people are still talking yeah. about, like, RU58841, which no one – to this day, no one knows what the fuck mm. they're putting on their head. But, you know, they, <laughs> yeah, people so are willing to experiment with these gray label, you know, products, gray market products, I should say. And everyone is an expert. Everyone has their own level of expertise. And – uh, there's like a pecking order online of, of 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 bro science experts. It's kind of a really fascinating phenomenon that Joe and I have watched for the last thirty years. It's, have you have you found the difference with with women uh, how they because women don't tend to do this, do they? I think women are less. They go less the uh, bro science route, and yeah. it, it's more yeah. the emotional route. And let's uh, you know throw all of our money at this. And depend on the doctor route, and then yeah. you know they they listen the, the women's the women's side of things. I mean it's 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 really difficult, you know. It's really really difficult, and I don't think well men aren't taken seriously either. But it's interesting that while I would say in general society may empathize more with women who are dealing with hair loss. Mm-hmm. Women who are dealing with hair loss are still blown off by, by medicine. They're not taken seriously in general. Dermatologists will handle a bottle of Rogaine and now maybe prescribe them uh, oral minoxidil. But unless you're a real specialist and understand the emotional aspects of hair loss and how it's affecting these women, a lot of doctors are kind of like, well, you know, it's genetic. You're going to have to live with it. You know, it's not that bad. When a woman loses 10 percent of her hair, that's bad. They're they're freaked out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're in, they're suffering. You know, yeah. and a lot of these women they they don't have their hands held. They're not really, I think, treated with the respect that hair loss or female pattern hair loss deserves. I I know you. This is what you specialize in, and you're an expert in this, so you deal with this. But in general, your non specialist colleagues they don't really treat it with the respect that it deserves. No, I, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. But it, it was just sort of, um, you know, and, and it, it must at some level boil down to some, you know, personality differences between men and women. Uh, I, I, for example, got, um, you know, I, I can think of this young guy that I saw who's, who's got male pattern hair loss, but, you know, he, he, he actually you know, did want to believe the diagnosis, you know, because of everything, everything else that he's read. And we, we ended up having to do a biopsy to prove to prove it to him. And and mm. on the biopsy, you know, so he me exactly, you know, sort of every single parameter. Your 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 so your volume's a little low. Can you speak into your mic? Um. Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. For some reason, it's a little Better. low. But go ahead. Oh, oh sorry. No, I, I was just uh, talking, uh, saying that it. You know, I suppose it must boil down to personality differences between men and women. But I, I, I can think of a guy I, I saw recently who's a young guy with male pattern hair loss. You know, more, more, more of the the diffuse type um, rather than the the, the, the Hamilton Norwood pattern. Right. Um, who mm-hmm. who uh, didn't want to believe that he had male pattern hair loss, um, 
and and we ended up having to do a biopsy, you know, to to kind of put his mind at rest. And he, this guy, is, I think he's 23, and and he wanted to know every single parameter, you know, these these details on a biopsy that would escape most doctors who aren't hair specialists. Right. And he wanted me to tell him, you know, what every single number, what the terminal to venous ratio was, what the what the he wanted me to even uh, sort of, you know, uh, report on, on, on things that pathologists don't normally talk about, like the, the diameter of individual hairs and, and things like that. And it's, it's just, you know, as, as you just said, women often don't get taken seriously and it affects them a lot. But the, the, the kind of how men approach this psychologically, and that's not all men, I know, but how they approach it psychologically mm-hmm. and... and um, it's it's just fascinating uh, how 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 they they almost as you said become become experts at it. Well, they they do, and there's definitely there's there, it's interesting that you bring this up because there is a a very marked difference between how men and women deal with it, and the bro science aspect of things in men, it's off the charts, off the charts. Now, I was one of those guys. Yeah. You know, I decided to turn it into a career as opposed to spending my time online and, you know, battling out with people and becoming an online expert. But I, it is it is interesting. You know, I think, you know, women just they tend to depend more on what the physician has to say. And maybe it's, you know, it's, I don't know if it's a testosterone thing. Probably. Maybe we just feel like we, we want more control. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. I have seen I have seen the odd woman like that, but but you know the they tend to be more um, more you know they tend to be to have a personality that you would associate more with a man you know sort of more laid back and not as emotional. Right. Um, the mm-hmm. odd woman that I've seen who kind of um, scientific uh, approach that you will know, spend a lot of time uh, researching and so on, but but they they tended to be a bit more. Well, t- coming across I'll, as headstrong I'll, I'll tell you what, Doc, this would be a really interesting paper. And if you want to, you know, put something together, I could probably have it published for you. At the very least on, in Dermatology you, Times, but maybe someplace else. You mean how the, the differences uh, between how men and women approach this? Yeah, just basically like a, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a, uh, it wouldn't be a study, obviously, but it just just uh, basically, you know, your, uh, you know, your perception based on patients coming into your practice, because it really is, I think, it's a very interesting it, it, account. It, it, it could, it could even be a study, you know, if, if 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 a sort of a questionnaire was designed on 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 asking people questions, for example, of how much time they spend online, for instance. I mean, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure that. You know, that and, and what, what what sort of content they, they're viewing online? Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's vastly different between men and women. I, I can imagine women spending a lot of time looking at products and um, how they can how they can camouflage their, their hair loss and so on. Whereas men, it'll be you know sort of trying to 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 find out why this is going on and what what the evidence is. And I also say, that. based on my experience, it seems that women are more drawn to so what celebrities are using for their hair than men. Now men are too, but it seems a lot heavier in the women's market. So if a celebrity endorses some BS product, every woman's on it. Yeah, and and, and sometimes even though that, that you know I might be wrong, but men are, might, might be might be slightly better at, at identifying you know what's what's BS and versus what's um, um, what's not. I, I mean, it depends. I think I think that depends, and maybe based mm. on the cohort that you're dealing with, you know. I mm. mean, maybe you have a more educated group coming into your practice. But I know a lot, a lot of dummies out there, you know. And I was one of them. That you know, they fall for everything that's being sold online. Possibly, you know, maybe maybe it's just you know how 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 people kind of maybe. Um you know, sort of different behaviors because uh, women often will, will will buy a lot of products, uh, whereas men will maybe sort of. Um, well, I can tell you this: maybe you read more before they do. If you want to sell rosemary oil, you want to sell it to women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, still still plenty of guys will buy it too. That's true. <laughs> well, Doc, you know, think, think Uni- unisex that. rosemary oil. I think having something like that published <laughs> would be really interesting. 
Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it some thought and, and, and maybe come up with a questionnaire that I'll give out to men and women and, and, and see what the responses are. That would be great. I'll help you out with that. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, Doc. Thanks for the call. Well, thanks, thanks. I really Doc. appreciate Good it. Good to hear from you. Thanks for calling. Take care. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, what time is it? Maybe it we're a couple minutes late. 4.57. We have time for one more call, Joe? Absolutely. Let's All do right. it. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, guys. This is Adrian from... Melbourne, of all places. Adrian, what's happening? We've got this all is, the Australians This is the in. Australian episode, the Australian version of the bald truth. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, Adrian? <laughs> bald truth. Yeah, good. Good, um, good, Joe. I uh, hope you're, you're well and uh, and you too, Pence. Yeah. Um, yeah, Joe, I just I flicked you a couple of pics, too, on your Instagram messenger. Um, one was of that oh. one I sent you of the crown, the video, and then I sent you one of... Uh, just recently, which is like nine months from that now, I guess. Um, oh, wow. But, um, yeah, um, I'm good. I'm happy to say that Lonerton has finally hit our shores down under, finally. So um, I've uh, okay. maxed out that. And and as Graham was saying, um, yeah, I've, I've had a great response to oral minoxidil. Um, I would say more so than the topical finasteride. That's great. Um, yeah. Yeah, but um, um, yeah, I, I just uh, I just thought I'd ring in, guys, and just you know tell you where I'm at. Um, really happy with the work that's been done with my hair, um, and also I know Graham personally, and I've seen those photos, and it's incredible how he's he's just held his hand off surgery. He, he's just like he's like you, Spencer, in that he he's emotionally very smart, Graham, with the way he approaches. His hair loss, like it, it is more of a hobby, um, right? And I guess it is for all of us to a degree. But um, well, I think part of yeah, it was I'm that right. he went the hairpiece route first and got screwed over by mm. that. You went the hair yeah. transplant route first, and then you had no choice. That's right. That's right. Um, I, went, I took many routes when I look back on yeah. the last. I, and and I, just, I just want to say, I, I'm, I'm going to try to throw this on the screen with my phone. Um, see if we can focus on this. This is uh, Adrian at six months. And uh, you can see the S&P in the scalp. He's, he's combing through his hair. And you had a lot of beard hair in there, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So, I mean, it still looks good. Like, you know, when, when you style it, it really makes a huge difference. But then here is an image at nine months. And that was it, outside it is, in see, outdoors, the Philippines. Yeah, like that's a. It's it actually looks darker. Um, I don't see the S and P through that, so it's definitely thickened up. Like that's um. That's pretty damn yeah, impressive. I was surprised. I was surprised. It, it's very go. subtle. Um. It's sort of well, what I like about this, the... what I like about this, is, and, and granted, I, I can't see it in the same perspective as that video, but what I like about this is it looks like the beard hair is actually blended better uh, as more hair is coming through. Because because the problem with beard hair is a lot of times it looks like beard hair is growing on your head. Um, it doesn't look like that yeah. in this nine month. It's 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 a nice improvement yeah. where it looks like the textures have softened. Uh, density is obviously improved uh, because of more hair coming through, but this is. You know, it's interesting. Congratulations, I, man. I don't think a lot of people talk about it, but um, you know, there is a recipient dominance for some people that was mm -hmm. originally pointed out by Ray Woods back in the late '80s and early early '90s, and yeah. where for some people, for, and we still don't exactly understand why. Hair that's moved from different parts of the body will eventually take on the characteristics of what would be growing from the scalp. But that doesn't happen with everybody, and I can't figure out why that is. So that may be your case, uh, Adrian. You, you, the, the, the beard hair may be starting to kind of um, transfer, so to speak, into looking more like your scalp hair and acting more like your scalp hair. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that actually might be the case. I remember the last time I called in, um, we sort of touched on that idea. But I definitely know from the first procedure, um, which is now, what, jeez, uh, um, must be 20 months ago or something like that, um, the hair that was placed in, in, in the in the vertex and in the, in the front, etc., um, at, that that has softened. Now that could be just due to also a lot of you know hair shampoo and whatnot. But I think it is starting to um, resemble the hair of, the, of that area. That's great, man. And mm-hmm. and it is softening um, because, as Joe said, like if you just put beard hair in the crown, it won't. It wouldn't matter even if you had it um, implanted at the right angle. It's going to grow everywhere. It's going to look like a right. Um, a, a bun, a wild bun. Look, man, I, 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 I just want to let you know, and I know you know this, but I mean, first of all, it was, it's an incredible repair job. But I mean, the hair looks so good, and I know that you had a very nasty person make a very public comment uh, about oh, yeah. about yeah. Uh, yeah. about your work, and essentially saying you should go to her dad to get that mess on your head fixed. And the reality oh, is. Well, that was that was horrific. But the reality is, I just want you to know. I know you know this. That was just out of meanness. I mean, that, there's no truth to that comment. Your repair is nothing less than miraculous. Yeah, hundred percent. I think very few people could have actually performed that for you. And in my view, I don't think her dad would have done that that good of a job. There's no chance in the hell he could have done that. No chance in hell. Sorry, Spencer. It's just had just to breaking say. up the line. Um, can you hear me now? <laughs> Are you there, Matt? Adrian, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I, I can hear you, but it's it's breaking up. But I I I, I get what you're talking about. It must be uh, the comments made on Facebook about my hair that was supposedly that bad. It required to be chucked in the garbage bin. It was our friend John Cole's daughter that. I can said, hear you now. I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, it was our friend Sorry, John yes. Cole's daughter that said something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. That was hilarious. I, I couldn't believe. It, but, first of all, I couldn't believe that would come out of, an, of out of a human being's mouth. But when you take a close I look at the entire situation in the family, I, I guess, and I have to say this publicly, I guess I do understand it. Oh, well, yeah. I, I, look, I need to say John, that that a, a, a normal human being shouldn't say that, but when you take someone that has some sort of, you know, connection with the industry and has some sort of idea, you know, I'm, obviously she's heard the uh, the pity stories that her father's talked about over the past, you know, uh, through, you know, probably 15 years that she can remember of her life uh, or longer. Yeah. Um, it makes it even worse. Uh, it is truly a repugnant statement to come from anyone, much less someone that's, that's attached to the hair restoration industry. I, I was, I was disgusted. Like I was beside myself. I, I've never seen anything like that before. So, for for her to say oh, that, absolutely. and then to su- suggest that you go to her father was ridiculous because her father her her father couldn't do something like this. He's done some body hair reconstructions, but nothing like you've you've had. Nothing like what you've had, my friend. Yeah. No, her chances of going to bed with me are gone. <laughs> Long gone now. <laughs> you know, and if she's lucky, she can cook. If she's... But the point is, um, it, it's just fortunate she said it to me and not someone else. Because someone else would not would have probably been taking that to heart. I, I thought it was hilarious. Well, yeah. that's the thing. But, someone uh, else, yeah. and, and I'm glad, you know, you said that. Because someone else, they, they would have taken it to heart. And believe it or not, there are guys mm-hmm. out there who that would cause them to, that would be a tipping point for them. Especially... After oh, everything they, they, that, yeah, they'd fall that, off. Yeah, that you've been through, that can that could, you know, light a fire under someone's ass to harm them, harm themselves. I mean, that was yeah, I couldn't even believe how horrifically irresponsible and cruel her comments were. It's frightening, actually, that a human being can can be that way. Yeah. Well, like I said, uh, you know, the apples didn't fall far from the tree. That's with that whole yeah. family, and that is the truth. Uh, I, the, the man so we started talking mind. about it. We weren't planning on it again. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I, I just wanted Here Adrian to know that those comments were ridiculous, and he should feel, and I know that he does, but 
sometimes someone needs to, you know, a little confirmation when it comes to this. I mean, your work and your repair is amazing. I don't, yeah. very few people in this industry could have done what they've done for you and got you to where yeah, you are now. Where, I mean, no one would know you had hair transplant unless they were in the industry and really looked at your head at this point. And from where you came right, from, and forget it. And those. What was that? I say I don't think Hannah knows I've had a hair transplant. I mean, <laughs> she just said uh, I, th- I think she's had a hair Good point. transplant, but that's beside the point. That's, well, look. But no, look. The, the the family, you know, like if you look at their family tree, it's a cactus. You know, it's just full of pricks. So I don't take anything they say too hard one bit. And I'm being very, you know, subtle uh, when I'm saying. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. I just, I just wanted to put that out there. I just wanted to make sure that you knew. And I, I have no skin in the game. And I'm not just trying to make you feel good. I mean, it's very, your work is incredibly impressive and very few people. I mean, I think it was a perfect storm for you. That's all I'm going to say. You really lucked out in many I, I, ways. Look, I was, I was lucky. Every duck lined up in a row from, from that first call from mm-hmm. you, Joe, which... I'm eternally indebted for, and um, what transpired since then. Um, you know, I was lucky. I, I, I got. I got to tell you, it, it wasn't. It wasn't really to help you. It was just just to satisfy my my curiosity, my morbid curiosity about um, you know Australian accents. I just I just like talking to Australians. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I was, uh, I was, I was, I was waiting. For, I was waiting for some uh, for some cliches to th- you know throw out, but it, it never happened. We just kept talking about hair, and that's fine. I'm glad it worked out well, anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it did. It really did. And you know, I spent two yeah. two years speaking with Pradeep, so I wasn't rushing into it. We were talking about everything but hair. Oh, yeah. We just really, and he gave me the confidence that yes, this could be done. Um, and I've got to thank Graham too, because Graham and I would chat every week about should I do it, shouldn't I do it, and um, you know he, yeah. he's always been in my corner, which is which is great. Yeah. But look, I, I he's, just, he's I good just got a second chance. I got a second chance, and I just want to pay it back um, to to people who are even considering a hair transplant. Because I've said this before, and I think Joe, you're kind of on a similar line of thought in that if if. I didn't have for me. If I didn't have the scars, I wouldn't have had a hair transplant. I would have buzzed my hair like Graham and yeah. kept the SMP and got life. Yeah. But the fact that it was possible, um, and doing all the re- the due diligence I did, um, which has really opened my lifetime since I was eighteen, was enough for me to to make that decision of going going forward on that. But um, also this show too, Spence, you're. You're just a magician. Um, everyone waits with bated breath for well, um, your show to come on. I appreciate that. I, I've been job. called the Harry Houdini of the comb over, but never a magician per se. I, th- I thought I was going to say people were waiting with bated breath for you to shave your head to see if you do look like came from from Kung Fu. It but may happen. If I get on the juice, it's going to happen. Happened. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I think we'll die of old age before uh, it pulls out, Spence. Don't worry. I think you're solid, man. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's what they all say. He is. All right, brother. Well, listen, but, I, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate the call. I appreciate what you're trying to do for for young hair loss sufferers out there so they don't have to go through what you've mm-hmm. been through. And, yeah, um, thank you. I'm glad that you didn't take what uh, Hannah Cole uh, wrote to you to heart because that was just it was it was a really ridiculous sad and and disappointing display of of uh just it was just bad form you know that's all i can tell you yeah. I, don't want, I don't want to speak mm-hmm. you know I, I don't know this girl and obviously she's she's her father's daughter what are you going to do but uh i'm sure she has other good attributes hopefully well, she can cook, like I said before. That's true. <laughs> That's but, just ridiculously um, terrible. It, That's something it, a sexist warranted. would say. Like, what was that? Um, what's that? No, go ahead. Sorry, Spence, just breaking up again. Oh, man, I don't know if it's my phone line or if it's you. I can hear you now. Can you hear me? I can hear you. It's just breaking up, but okay. I'll, I'll let it go. Thank you, guys, 
for your show today and for um, for everything you do. We owe you all huge. Absolutely. Adrian, man, I, I really appreciate it. Take care. Congratulations again on your results. And appreciate thank, your Thank support. you for everything you do. Yeah. And Take care, Adrian. Thank you, Berger. Thank you, both. All right. Take Thanks, it easy. Guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <sighs> Such a good guy. Very good guy. That's why I had to ask him. I, I just had to tell him, look, man, he looks good. Don't don't take what this person, this angry, unhappy person said. Don't yeah. take don't take it seriously. I can't believe human I mean human nature people are just so fucked up, man. People are animals. <laughs> I mean, think about what this poor guy's been through. And he's finally come through the other side, and he's happy. <laughs> Some chick just just says something just so so evil. Evil. That's pure and, evil. And petty. And petty. Petty. Petty and evil. Anyway. Good stuff. He He's, you know, I, I think about Adrian and... Not only has he had, you know, an, an amazing transformation as a repair patient, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Like, I, 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 he's always ready to talk to someone about their issues, not what he's been through, you know, and where he's come out on the other end. He's happy to talk to them about what they're going through. And that's, that's the mark of a real... Um, Mensch. A real hair transplant mentor. That's true. Huh? Huh? It is. I like that. And uh, so, so I com- I commend him for that. He's he's one of the he's one of the good ones. So glad well, to have him aboard. On that note, let's call it a night, guys. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, you can check out archives of this broadcast on youtube.com forward slash hair transplant mentor. That's the hair transplant channel. Um. I'm going to continue my work this year, so don't worry. can't believe the year's almost over. It's almost Halloween, Mm -hmm. which is insane. But I think 2024, at least in our world, in the hair loss world, if, you know, if we're not in World War III, I think things are going to be pretty good. I mean, if we are in World War III, I think that's the end of the Turkish market, by the way. Maybe, I don't know. They're pretty. They're pretty uh, resilient, and and guys want their hair. You know, they'll show up in hazmat suits and um, <laughs> with Geiger Geiger counters. That's true. You're right, man. Could you just take a little bit right here? And, yeah, know. they want a, They want an inexpensive hair transplant. All right, guys. Listen. Until next time, be strong. God bless, and thank you all so much for listening. Have a good night. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for any inconvenience you may have been put to prior to the program, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. And if you could now leave by the exits at the rear, that would be splendid. Thank you.